Hey guys, this is uh, Jonathan McCormack. I'm an attachment specialist in New York, and I want to talk about the ideal parent figure protocol. Of all the modalities, this may be the best one to teach attachment disturbances. This was created by uh, Dan Brown and David Elliott in a book called Attachment Disturbances. Uh, Dan died last year and David kind of took over. I, I see him every two weeks and I've uh, been blessed enough to be part of his um, supervisory group. Um, so there's a lot of confusion over this. The ideal parent figure protocol is just one of three pillars to treat this thing. What is it? It's kind of sort of people describe as a guided meditation. It, it's really not though. Um, but I, I, I can see why you would think that because it kind of feels that way. In a guided meditation, you kind of just close your eyes and then the, the person kind of just guides you through a scene. And it kind of feels like that. It can start off like that. For the ideal parent uh, figure, it, it, essentially what you're trying to do is you go back, you float back to childhood, and then you imagine scenes you are getting those developmental needs met by your parents and their five big emotions we're trying to get somatically. You're not just imagining it, you're trying to get in your body. The first is a feeling of safety. Uh, it's promoted by parents being very consistent, very reliable. Uh, parents, you feel that they have the ability to protect you from any danger or threat, and you feel like, no, this person, when they're around, they're making sure everything's safe. And you feel that deep inside till you internalize that feeling of safety. The second one is feeling seen and known. And um, that's promoted by the parents being very attuned to the child. The child acts, the parent reacts in an appropriate way. And I tell you, it's very difficult to live life without being seen and known. This used to be called the wound of old age. I've known elderly that would go to the doctors simply so someone would look at them, so someone would touch them. They could just feel a touch because they have no family, no kids, and no one knows what's going on with them. And when you don't feel seen, that no one gets you, you feel invisible. That's a big part of loneliness. People I know with a lot of friends you know, who are married still feel very lonely. Why? Because no one understands that things are important to them and they can't share that with anyone. Um, uh, the third uh, is, is an experience of felt comfort and, and that your, your parents hopefully will be able to soothe you. Same way in a relationship. Whenever you're dysregulated, your partner should come, and hopefully being around them makes you feel um, more regulated. You know, I ask, if you're with someone, are you able to regulate them? Do you feel more balanced when you're around them, just naturally? And can you do that for them? Uh, the fourth is a sense of being valued. Um, that's, you know, experiencing delight, being delighted in as a child. And the fifth is... Uh, a sense of support, you know, you feel supported. Um, so the meditation, you go back and you'll close your eyes and then I'll say something like, you know, oh, and notice how the uh, ideal parents are looking at you with this look of love and, and uh, look how, what makes it so clear they cherish you? And that'll look different for everyone. There's nothing specific uh, to one person. Um, uh, they'll feel very safe if the ideal parents are far away, you know, like 20, 30 feet away. They're still getting used to that safety. I don't know what makes you feel safe to someone else. They feel really safe when they have their arms wrapped around them, that felt sense of comfort because they're very comfortable. Uh, so there's nothing specific, I would say. Like it, it, it's when you do the ideal parent uh, meditation, this is why you, you, you really ought to do it with another person, a therapist or facilitator or someone because it's relational all healing happens in relationship period 
people are avoidant, they don't want to hear that. They want to take these meditations and just do it by themselves. And, and I actually think that can uh, be beneficial, you know. But it is missing the point. Because when you're doing with a facilitator, um, the, the other there's three pillars. One's the ideal parent figure protocol. And the other two are uh, collaboration and mentalization. And the collaboration is important because that's where you learn attunement. Uh, both of you, 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 the therapist and the, and the client, is um, trying to do something together. You know, so think about it. If we're doing the ideal parent figure. You know, your eyes are closed and you're imagining, I don't know what you're imagining. Hopefully you'll share it with me. You know, my eyes are closed. I'm trying to tune into you. You're trying to tune into me. You're trying to express what's happening, what you're feeling to me. And boy, that's very difficult. I mean, this is like real. It's like a gymnasium for entombment because we're not looking at each other. You're in your own place. And I'm trying to, we're trying to do this meditation together, together, you know. And that means a couple things. You know, you have to develop trust, attunement, eventually be honest, but also mention when the other person's got it wrong. That's a lot of times, that's when the progress really starts getting made. When someone says, uh, you know, we were doing this meditation and, uh, you know, you said something, uh, and that's not where I was at at all. I was in a completely different place. And I have to say, I got really resentful. I thought it was very controlling. Boy, they just mentioned their needs. They mentioned, and now I have to change, you know? And now I can be more attuned to them because I know more. And we're attuning to each other. And that's what it's about, you know? So much about attachment is that attunement. So collaboration is important. The other piece of the collaboration is that you're going to break rapport, you know? If you're in a relationship, you're going to clash. You're going to misunderstand each other. It's just going to happen all the time. You have to learn to repair those things. And a lot of therapy, the therapist is just sitting back. It's not very collaborative. Just, mm, you know, tell me more about that. Yes, I see. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Your father beat you for eight years. Mm, how does that make you feel? Yeah, you know. But with this, the collaboration is you're really trying to uh, work in it together. Like, together, let's figure this out. What happened? What were you feeling together? You know, I don't know, you know, and and so I'm going to say things that just are all off the mark, you know, and that's just going to happen in every relationship. And, and hopefully we're going to be honest and, and say, no, no, that's not what I meant. I meant this. We're going to repair, repair, repair any kind of little miscommunications. No big deal. But it, it's something you learn to do automatically, you know, uh, the mentalization. All this is involved doing the meditation. It's not like they're not that separate, but the mentalization briefly is about um, being aware of how you're thinking and what you're thinking. Um, so for example, uh, an avoidant will not give that much information out. You know, I'll be like, oh, tell me about your childhood. It was good. Uh, what about your uh, your mother there? Uh, how was your relationship? With them? Pretty good, you know. And and you have to say like you know, um, you know. I don't know if you realize, but when you give me these one word answers, I actually don't know what's going on. I can't understand where you're coming from. I mean, did did, did you know that? Did you realize that you had that effect on people when when you use those? It, it almost it like sounds like you really don't want me to hear, which is okay. But, but that's how it feels on my end. It's tricky because people get insulted, you know. On the anxious side, if you have anxious friends, you'll notice this, you'll ask a question, and they will just ramble for like 20 minutes. And they, sometimes they don't even answer the question. They'll be talking about this, they'll be talking about that. And their minds aren't clear. I have a friend who does this all the time. So if he was a client, though, if we had a good relationship, I might say, like, you know, um, I had a hard time following that. You know, you're kind of all over the place and uh, you didn't stick to the point. Um, could you, can you parse that down to just get to the point, the actual thing you're trying to convey to me? And hopefully you realize like, oh, yeah, I guess if I ramble for 20 minutes, that's gonna make it really hard for people to understand me. And there's gonna be a lot of miscommunication. If you're avoidant and you never open up, how are you supposed to be attuned to someone? I mean, 
do you realize the way you speak, the way you act affects other people? And a lot of times we don't, you know. If you didn't get that mirroring and that tune as a child, you, you, you are a bit alienated from that, you know. Um, so those are the three things. Uh, and the, the ideal parent figure protocol itself I'll do a quick one just to kind of show you what it's like. But David Elliott and a lot of people think you really ought not to. If you have uh, any sexual abuse, don't do this alone. Don't do this now. Get a facilitator, get a therapist. If you have um, any trauma, any dissociation, again, don't do this, you know? So just briefly, if you're in a good space, and if you're not, try to think of mm, maybe three things that were really helpful, uh, where you felt that peace or you felt proud of in the past year, just to get those kind of lit up in your mind. So now you're in a positive state, you're in a resourced state, okay? And uh, just to explain how we'll do it is we'll, we'll uh, take a couple deep breaths, we'll get into the body, into the body, and we'll do a body scan. People with attachment issues have a hard time getting in touch with their body. So uh, we will do that. And then I'll float back to childhood. And then I'll have you float back to childhood, get younger, and then bring in the ideal parents. Now the ideal parents, these are not your real parents. These are imaginary parents. And these are ideally suited just for you. I don't know what you needed as a kid. You do. And you can give those qualities to them. Don't make them based on anyone you know. Um, it's important the felt sense. Not so much visualizing them. A lot of people aren't very visual. But you've been around people where you feel safe. Like, no, this person, this girl, I, I just feel safe. I can share anything I'd like here. You know? That felt sense in the body and when I do it I'll, I'll be saying like you know notice how that affects your body you know and your mental state because when you're calm you're much more uh, regulated and your mind is much clearer and you might not even notice that and if you don't then when you're upset and you're talking you not realize like whoa I'm very upset now the things I'm saying really aren't making sense and they're not going to I'm gonna have to calm down you know, you might not realize that at all, you know. That's part of mentalization. If uh, you had some real issues with your folks, just for this, this isn't part of the ideal, but I would just caution you. You can even use uh, some other attachment figure. Some people use like the Dalai Lama or just some spiritual figure, you know, just, just so you can get an idea. You know, eventually though, you do want ideal parents. Um, so let, let, let's try that out. Uh, so <clears throat> I would just ask you to get into the meditative posture with your back straight, but loose. And you can just start bringing your awareness into the body, bringing your awareness in, in and down. And we're going to take a deep breath, hold it, and then slowly release. We're going to take a super deep breath. Hold it below the belly. And then slowly release. you to do a body scan and you can just focus your awareness on your forehead just notice any tension there move your awareness down down around the eyes softening the eyes softening the cheeks moving into the jaw softening the muscles around the jaw a wave of warm, loving awareness moving down your neck into your shoulders, moving down your arms, 
down your torso, down, down. Loosen the belly, loosen the hips. Wave of warmth moving down your legs, down. All the way down to your feet, firmly planted on the ground, like roots of a tree. Now, I would just invite you to imagine being surrounded by clouds, warm, fluffy clouds above and below. And notice you can just let go and fall. And notice the clouds support the weight of your body. In a moment, I'm going to count five to one. And when I reach one, these clouds will have taken you to a place that's perfectly safe perfectly secure and I just want you to know that you're in control here you can open your eyes you can come out of it it's up to you I'm just a guest now I invite you to close your eyes or look downward whatever's comfortable and imagine being lifted up on those clouds and now you're drifting and five Four, three, two, one. And now you're in your own special safe place. And you can just notice what makes this place so secure and safe. And you can imagine if it's outside or inside. It can be imaginary or real. But this is your special place. And you can notice the smells, any sounds. And just take a moment to get very clear on this place. Yeah. Good. And now, I would invite you to float back to childhood. Getting younger and younger. More and more young. Until you're that small child perhaps between the ages of five and 10. And being that small child in that small body, looking out from those small eyes, you really feel you are that small child, innocent and carefree, in your special safe place. And now, being that small child, I would invite you to bring in the ideal parents. And these aren't your real parents. These parents are ideally suited just for you and for someone with your nature. And perhaps they're standing 10 or 15 feet away. And as a small child, you are very curious about these parents. And you notice the way they move, very calm, very steady, their clothes, the tone of their voice, very soothing. And notice what it is that allows you to feel so safe around these parents. There's something about them. Maybe it's how they're looking at you or how they're holding themselves. But there's something that makes it very clear that they are just devoted to you and your safety. And as you notice what that is, you can bring your attention to your body and notice where you feel that feeling of safety in your body. And as you focus your awareness on that feeling of safety in your body. Perhaps it becomes more and more familiar. And easier and easier to call up and to hold in your awareness, this feeling of safety. And now, you look up and you notice their eyes, and these eyes are shining. 
and notice what it is that allows you to know that they are delighted in you. Perhaps it's a gleam in their eyes, a smile, but they are delighted in you. Just delighted to see you. They are so proud and happy to be your parents. And this might feel a little strange. But notice you can take in that delight. And notice how you respond to it. And notice how they know just the right way to make you feel comfortable with it. If you want to bring them closer, you can do that. But they're just as happy to move further away to give you space. They're there for you. And you can move them further away, closer, until it feels just right. Shaping and reshaping the scene until it's perfectly comfortable for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And now, if you're yearning for a connection, you can even go up to these ideal parents. You can tell them what you're feeling, what's going on with you. These ideal parents are so attuned to you. They not only see you, they see what's inside of you. They see the shifts. And notice you can share anything, not just good feelings, even feelings of sadness, grief. They know just the right way to create a space that's safe for you to express yourself. Go ahead and take a moment. Speak to them if you want. If you want, you can go up and hold their hand. These ideal parents are not shy to show physical affection. They're very open, but only in a way that you're comfortable with. Go ahead and develop that scene. See if you can feel that warmth and notice that warmth and notice where it shows up in your body. This feeling of warmth and safety. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. And now, we're gonna wrap up in a moment but I would just point out all the things you did with these ideal parents, that you met them, perhaps you shared with them, perhaps you interacted with them. You did a lot of things. And all these feelings, all these lessons, firmly anchored in the body, having had all the time you need to make these feelings part of the foundation of your identity. And perhaps you'll notice, glimpsing into the future, that you can call up these feelings anytime, these feelings of safety, feelings of being delighted in. They're always available for you. Now I'm gonna count five to one. And when I reach one, you'll be back in the room in the present with these lessons firmly anchored in the body. And five, four, three, Two, one, back in the room, safe and secure. That's kind of how it goes. Let's just give you an example. And as these ideal parents become more and more familiar, it becomes more easy to open up, to share. They become real uh, internal objects that you can constantly get in contact, constantly resource yourself in. And the idea is that in the first uh, 18 months of life, you get this internal working model. It tells you what to expect from people. It tells you how you're going to react, 
what different things mean. And with this, you're devising a new internal working model. The unconscious doesn't recognize the difference between memory and imagination. Fascinating to see the MRIs. The same, it, you'll look at them, this is someone imagining, this is someone remembering. It looked the exact same, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And that's because, especially in childhood, you're are very porous. You're uh, between fantasy and memory. Little kids live in a fantasy world. So the brain is usually going off your actual memories to predict what might happen. And now you have these imaginary memories, these new experiences, only if they're felt, because we're reprogramming the nervous system. You can't just sit there and imagine, you have to feel it. And I know that can be very difficult, especially for a lot of us with attachment problems. It's like, where do you feel that? I don't feel that at all. I feel delighted in it. I, what is that? It takes practice. These things are like a gymnasium, you know, like developing muscles. Muscle memory, it's kind of like that. It's like love memory. You're practicing because in a relationship, you're going to have to practice being delighted in, delighting the other person. But that will happen automatically if you have a new internal working model. How long does it take? Six months to three years. And honestly, doing it once a week with a facilitator is okay, but just okay. I hate when people try to oversell their modalities. Like they come up with something like, oh, this will cure everything. Come see me in three months, you know, you'll be perfect. And uh, No, no, it, it takes some work. And, and I, I wish that wasn't true. I wish it was a lot easier. But I gotta tell you, I know people do this every day, just like they meditate. So they do this 15 minutes a day and Geez, in a couple months, you'd be amazed, you know. With the someone else there, it makes a big difference. Sometimes people get disappointed because they do it on their own and they get all these emotions and then they do it in front of someone else. And it's a little less. Yeah, because if another human being's in the room, your uh, relational uh, uh, attraction are, are all of a sudden like, oh, there's another human being. You know, I have to be relational now, you know. That's where the work is. It's easy. It's easy to be in a fantasy world and be delighted in. A lot harder when there's a human being there in front of you, you know, witnessing it. Change, very odd, but oftentimes change needs a witness. Why is that? I, people have so many theories, write big books on this. I have no idea. But just having someone witness you in this can actually cause the change itself just to be witnessed that's how important it is and remember as you're doing this there's another person and we'll be collaborating so uh, you might say uh, during this like you know oh notice the ideal parasite you might say yeah that feels terrible that feels weird yeah I don't like that I don't want to be delighted in you know not right now and and oh I'll have to pick that up and off to you know, okay, you know, and the ideal parents see that and they see that you are uncomfortable and they get it, of course you're uncomfortable. And so watch what they do. I don't know what they do. You'd be amazed. They're they're the person's unconscious, like, oh, they back up, they say this, they do that. And if they get stuck, well then I, I kinda of come in and say, like, I notice they or back up or do whatever, they, they make sense of that for you. The other thing uh, the ideal parent figure protocol does is, is change the semantic meaning. So if you're a kid and your mother ignores you, you're the problem. You, you know why you're ignored, because you're unworthy. Yeah. Uh, the other option, that your mother might have issues, and, have, and perhaps she does, uh, not even her fault. You know, Perhaps she's working a million hours and has a million things to do. That's terrifying. She's like, no, 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 she has to always be there for me. This is like a god. This is my lifeline. Can't be anything wrong with her. No, no it's got to be me. As an adult, you go back and you say, like, well, no, no, that was her. That was her issues. That's fine. You can tell yourself that. But emotionally, it still feels like you did something wrong. And that's how you're going to react, according to how your nervous system feels and reacts every time. You can read all these books, get all this great insight, go to your relationship specialist, learn all these little techniques how to express yourself. It's still going to be hard when you're activated, you know. 
So if anyone has any more questions on that, uh, they can contact me. Um, this is kind of what I do. I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you.